in Donnie Darko. Yes. Okay, classic cult film of of all times with the great uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Talk about that experience. And I remember getting an audition for what was being billed as a Drew Barrymore movie, because no, you know, Jake Gyllenhaal wasn't Jake Gyllenhaal yet at this point. So yeah, it was, yeah, it was like a Drew Barrymore movie, and okay. I was like super excited to get Drew in there. From ET, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. right. So uh, the girl from ET, right? Yeah. So <laughs> I went What's to. Uh, I went into the audition. I was, I think I was 17 at the time. And the rest of, it was me and there was like a, all 11 year old kids in the waiting room. And I'm like, what is going on here? And I went and looked on the signing sheet and everybody was reading for the same part as me. And I went and I called my agent at the time and I was like, are you sure that I'm at the right place? And they're like, they, oh, they saw your picture. And I'm like, well, it's an old picture. <laughs> they had us going in like groups. So like I was with this other 11 year old kids and we just <laughs> with them and I'm like, what's up guys? You know. <laughs> and what happened was uh, originally the part of Donnie Darko was much younger. All of a sudden Jake Gyllenhaal signs on to do the movie. So they had, they went older with the ca- with the part okay. and they only had one guy that was- <laughs> <laughs> This will skew better. That's that we're going with it. That's yeah, it. so they were like, well, yeah. Dude, you could be, you're our guy. So that's how I got the part. Wow. And uh, it was a legendary set to be on for sure. Uh, okay. You know, a lot of us that were making the movie had no clue what the hell was it was about What's because it was so happening? confusing. Um, but you know, Seth Rogen, that was his first movie. Uh, he oh, yeah. was in the movie, another Canadian that, uh, you know, he and I were sort of buddies on that set. Cool. You know, Patrick Swayze, God rest his soul. He was on that in that movie. He was a, amazing to work with. Drew Barrymore was not only in it, but she was also the, I think she put up the money for it. She was the producer also. Wow. And there was a lot of improvising going on. Like none of us even, I mean, not none of us. I certainly didn't under, fully understand the script. So I was taking a lot of liberties, making up my own lines. Everybody was kind of doing that. A lot of that stuff made it to the movie. And I think that sort of helped make it even more special than it was. Donnie Darko was an independent movie that bombed. It came out on DVD and college kids started going crazy for it and crazy for it. I think yeah. they sold 2 million DVDs or something Jeez. to the point where they re-released the movie in theaters with a new cut two years later yeah. and we got to do it all again. And it's sort of a yeah. movie that never went away for me. It's still probably the best movie that Adam and I have made that I've been in. <laughs> uh, well, it gave you something to aspire to. And now Adam, now that we've totally blown you off, I, I wasn't in Donnie Darko. I mean, I'm gonna say it. No, I mean, you know, listen, we're, we're Stu and I are lucky that we're, we're able to, we're in a position where we get to create and make stuff and pitch our wacky, stupid, insane ideas and other people who are the decision makers like it and give us a shot to create what we want to create. And we love people like you and your and people who listen to your your stuff. And I hope that they take what you say uh, to the heart and, you know, go watch these movies, you know, because they don't have, the movies are made, you probably don't hear about them because they don't have big advertising budgets. That doesn't mean that they're not yeah. good. It means that they need to be a Donnie Darko to be rediscovered, and and you know, and that's how things blow up again. And and we're really on, you know, we're just in a good place. So we appreciate you, uh, 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 you know, pushing pushing the word along too. And yeah, man, we're all we're all here to do this same thing. For any people out there who are looking to make this your full time job, the reality is that you can't just make movies. I mean, it's just you can't just focus on making movies you got to go and learn how to produce and you know create commercials and music videos and you know learn different aspects of the film industry so that you could really be a one-stop shop and that's that's what will keep your you, you propel you to stay in the industry and, and you call yourself a full-time filmmaker because that's exactly what you are 99 out of 100 people have good ideas only one of those people is going to actually execute on it yeah your film or anything else, man. Uh, you know? Wow, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get that Soda tattooed on my or... body. <laughs> Your favorite Canadian rock musicians of all time. The tragically hip. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll go. Uh, well, obviously Rush, but I'll go. I'll, I'm gonna throw Brian Adams' name into the mix because Brian Adams is awesome. Yeah. I'm actually okay. kind of like really impressed that you know their music. Like, that's yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. No, no, no. Not you. Oh, John. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Canadian food. 
food that would be considered uh, indigenous or native to the land that you guys dig that Americans may not be familiar with. We've heard of back bacon. We don't know what the hell it is, but we've heard of that. But but if, if you had a go-to for something that's that's known to be uh, Canadian through and through, what would that be? We'll start with Stu this time. It's like we're on Family Feud right now. But I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna buzz in and say the number one answer on the survey Family is gonna Feudish. be poutine. Poutine, and it sounds like it's poo and teen, but it's actually P O U. Poutine. Okay. It's uh, French fries with gravy, cheese curds, and sometimes they throw other crap in there too. It sounds weird, but it is delicious. Good crap Poutine. though. Yeah. Wow. Poutine. Okay, that's a late night uh, meal after uh, perhaps partaking. Yes. Adam, where, where are you gonna go? I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot. We're blessed up here. Um, I'm an old fashioned uh, coffee crisp individual. Um, oh. Coffee crisp is a, uh, a friendly cousin of the Kit Kat with a little hint of coffee uh flavor sprinkled on, on it candy bar uh, it's a delightful it's a delightful chocolate bar thanks for interrupting Stu. um <laughs> and uh, 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 uh it's it's incredible they come bite size they come full size oh man um they're a little bit messy because they do like to crumple but they are delicious in your tummy coffee crisp uh, you know it, that, that's a good thing though you know them for one buddy oh. Oh, April wine, of course. Yeah. I saw them play in a strip club parking lot once. They're great. You you saw them where? <laughs> I saw them play live in a strip club parking lot once. No. Yeah. These guys I didn't go inside this. I didn't go inside the strip club. <laughs> we just went to the parking lot, and there was like a stage set up, and April wine was like headlining, and it was great. It was a great show. There was That'd no stripping. Way to see your favorite vacation spot uh, in Canada. I would probably pick Banff which is uh, there. Yeah. it's like a postcard come to life. It's like Twin Peaks, but the real life version. It's incredible, it's beautiful, and the scenery is just like vibrant. It's just, it just makes you feel like, wow. I, I can't quite yeah, determine the perspective of, of the third guy. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, there's my sister. Is that my, there's my sister who's Adam's wife in the background. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dina, wave, you can hey. wave. Dina, say Adam, hi. Adam's wife. Stu's sister, how you doing, man? No, that's John. You, you you get you get an inside look in my living room. This is no, that's this is exclusive. Favorite vacation spot in your country, in Canada? That if you had a week or two, this is where I'd like to just hang, man. Just be. There's no question about it. It's called Algonquin Park. Okay, I've heard it's of it. It's about yeah. three out three hours north of the city of Toronto. It's the most incredible. Fantastical outdoor canoe trip. Uh, spot that you could think of. Um, it's 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 gorgeous. It's fresh. It's off the grid, Algonquin Park. You get away from all the stews because he does not like the canoe. <laughs> yeah, I don't go. I wouldn't. Be, if, that, if that's Adam's dream vacation, let him go. Like I'm not going <laughs> on that one. You don't you don't like tack a, a poster, a full color poster, a 3D poster of, of stew up in a tree and say, God, you know, worry only here. And no, we do, we do, we do, we do. We just throw darts at it as well. Yeah. <laughs> Their names, Stu Stone and Adam Rodness, or as Adam would have it, Adam Rodness and Stu Stone. Oh. And they, <laughs> they make films, among other great things that they do. And the one they got coming out, and hopefully it's going to make it down to the United States where I and several of our viewers reside. Bandits with a V. Bandits. Look for that one. But right now, you can watch Scarecrows. And you can watch Faking a Murderer, and for God's sake, damn it, do it. Thanks for tolerating us and our, our classic Canadian rock and roll band trivia that I, I uh, Stu and Adam ended up totally bombing on. No, you guys actually did pretty damn well because most people would have been over. What do you mean? I told you that I saw April Wine play at a strip club a, parking lot. Fucking parking lot. Yeah. Me, I dreamed of that happened in my life one time. I, you know, I just, I, I fantasized, and you actually, you lived it. I, I, if I was there, I'll just do it. I'll do it right now. God said, before we go, I always have to thank Bruce Threlkel, who uh, plays all the music for my show. I, just a master musician. Uh, Bruce, thanks for, for doing that for the show. You can find Bruce's work and his music on his YouTube page, which is The Gig Farmer. Go there and see what Bruce is doing music-wise. It's astounding. Rock on with your favorite obscure Canadian 
rock group. Thank you, John. <laughs> <laughs>